You're pretty much dropping me into the England lineup. I haven't got match fitness. Harry Maguire hasn't got match fitness. Why can't we just be brave? He's earned the right to see us through this Euros. If we go back through the history of Gareth Southgate and we look at like results that have actually amazed us, I'm struggling. This is my Scottish accent, so bad. But I always feel like England that... No, that was... <laughs> playing with a handbrake on. Yeah, I agree. And that, going back to the main point, all stems back to the manager. If we line up in the first game of the Euros and I'm seeing Kieran Trippier at left back, Harry Maguire at centre back and Calvin Phillips in that team or Jordan Henderson, oh my, I will like lose my shit. <laughs>
mental health yeah. and you know protect the players and whatever. But the minute something goes wrong for him, they're on him. They're on him. And Gareth Southgate's come out and he's defended him. He said he is he's livid about what people have said about Harry mm. Maguire and the chance and everything. But at a point, you've got to look and you've got to protect your player and you've got to say, right, you're not playing to the standard we need. Mm. And I don't think he's been a bad asset for England, even in the Ukraine game, uh, even when he came on against Scotland. He was unfortunate to have that own goal, but like we were never really super, super tested. Yeah. So he didn't really have to have an amazing performance. And when he's been called upon, he's been good for England. But he's not playing for United for a reason. Yeah. And you've got players like Tomori, like Colwell, like Ben White, can't get a sniff because yeah. you, you're giving Harry Maguire, who can't even play for his own team, minutes. And I totally agree. It's, it's like you said, it's it's about taking him out of the firing line because at the moment, you hear constantly in like football um, kind of media that you can never replicate match kind of fitness, fitness yeah. and match kind of awareness. And if you believe that, Harry Maguire can't be in this team because he's not playing matches. And so what you're doing is you're dropping, you're pretty much dropping me into the England lineup. I haven't got match fitness. Harry Maguire hasn't got match fitness. You're just dropping us both in there. Obviously, we're not, neither of us are going to succeed. Whereas like, if he has match fitness, yeah, it's fine. But you're putting someone that's just clearly not prepared enough for a role. It's like if you're at Domino's and you're making pizza, you're not going to put a Donny with no arms in there. No, I agree. Because he's got no arms. He's not fit for purpose. No, exactly. It, and neither is Harry Maguire currently. <laughs> You're asking him to go and show why he should be in the English squad and like validate his position yeah. there and validate Gareth Southgate's selection. But it just goes wrong and it goes wrong and it goes wrong time and time getting again. Getting into the England squad is the pinnacle of most people. Or getting into your international squad is the pinnacle of most players' career. And you've got to earn that. And somewhere down the line in this Gareth Southgate tenure, it's kind of a loss. The like you have to earn it to get in. But it, like, it and it's now really it's just a power's club. When he was like, he, how long did he go without picking Madison? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, how long did he go without starting Grealish? So it's become a bit of a power's club. It for me, it is strange, and we are in a position where we're fortunate enough to have so much quality that can't even get into the team. When Gareth Southgate puts out his, te- his squad selections and he's got Harry Maguire, Calvin Phillips, mm. Henderson, you start to scratch your head and think, Especially when you is play this, all is this the man to take us forward? Yeah. Let's, um, let's move on quickly and talk about the Scotland game. It was a slightly changed lineup. We had uh, Aaron Ramsdale in goal. Yep. Uh, we had a back four with uh, Carl Walker, Lewis Dunk. Lewis was- Dunk outrageous yeah i want to highlight lewis dunk i haven't been his biggest fan over the years i thought he was quite one dimensional but under deserby i've kind of seen him in a new light he's he's very like astute on the ball i thought he was just kind of like a slightly more athletic harry Maguire, who just gets his head on everything which is what we saw in the scotland game every ball they put in the box fucking lewis dunk's big head was on it but, but he, him on the ball, he's good. He's very calm. And he he must draws have learned, players in. Yeah. He's really good at that. And you can tell he's learned a lot under yeah. the derby. And so I think he's, he's a massive asset. And his positioning is outrageous. Yeah. He, he's always in the right position. And that that's so important. And like to have... Obviously, when we line up for the first game of the Euros, you'd be thinking, unless something happens, John Stones will be in that team. Yeah, shout out John Stones. But you've got Lewis Dunk, who's going to be a brilliant asset, whether or not he stars. I'd like the I like a backline of Lewis Duncan John Stones. So I don't mind. Yeah, that. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I I don't have a problem with that at all. Left back position for worries some me reason. Slightly. Yeah, we're playing Kieran Trippier there still. I like Ben Chilwell. I think he's fine. I saw a stat where it was like so. Obviously, Gary Southgate came out and said that like Foden can't play centrally because he doesn't play there for Man City. And then I saw a stat where Phil Foden's played like seventy plus seventy seven games. games. Yeah, like twenty goals. But yet, Kieran Trippier has played like one game at left back for his club, and he's happy to put Kieran Trippier there. And it's uh, like, where is the consistency here, Gareth? It's these things that he says which makes me question. You can't, you can't question what he's done for England because no. he's taken us to a a World Cup semi final, a me, Euros final, yeah. and the France game in the in the uh, World Cup wasn't the greatest performance. Mm. 
but we were unfortunate, I think, in that game. Yeah. But are we limiting ourselves by having him as a manager? That's the question we have to ask. And I know we can give, and we've said this time and time again in the podcast, he's earned the right to see us through this Euros. Mm. He has earned that. And whether we win or lose, I think we both agree that is call it time, call it quits there. Because that's four tournaments? It's four tournaments. So that's, that's, that's pretty much a generation of players. And we, are mi- and we are in the midst of like a semi-golden generation here. And it's maybe going a bit, it's not going under the radar per se, but it's not being talked about as the same level of the previous golden generation yeah. where, where you had just big names upon big names. We can't allow this to just pass us by. We, we have to then see if we bring someone else in, where are we being limited by a lack of yeah. having a tactically astute manager? Even if we waste one tournament post Gareth Southgate on a new manager that doesn't work, and then we can realise, oh yeah, Gareth Southgate was quite good. But we need to try something different with this group of players at some point. The top team, top teams across club football are ruthless with their managers. If you're not, if you're not like, if you think Man City, if Pep hadn't uh, won uh, Premier, if, if he was finishing second in the Premier League and he was getting to the semi-finals of the Champions League every season, do you think he'd still be there? No, no, he eventually wouldn't. He, got the, he wouldn't. The bullet, yeah. And I, and it's it's a completely different game, but the sort of precipice about it, it still remains. So, it was a much improved performance against Scotland, yes. and what we were lacking in that Ukraine game was any motion of attacking fluidity. We looked so much better when we had um, Marcus Rashford out on the left. Mm. I think he offers a lot, which yeah, helps when Harry Kane, because he Harry Kane, if he doesn't get a touch up the outside the box, he's going to drop back. I saw him playing right Mate, back for yeah, that he time. So deep. And I, I don't mind it, because obviously in that Ukraine game, he's the one that played the phenomenal ball to Walker to score. And it's that he, that's what he can do. Mm. But I want him at the top end of the pitch. We've yeah. got players who will bring the ball up to him. And I'm like, if you're not having that, that centre forward in that position, who's given problems to centre backs, then what's happening? Yeah. But Marcus Rashford sort of alleviates that a little bit because he's one player, I think, more than anyone that will get behind. Yeah. And he can drift into that central position. And the player who also missed out on the squad, Raheem Sterling, is also probably one of the best players in the world at breaking lines. Like, he's always plays off the bat. I think Bukayo Saka, mm. he likes to get the ball and then sort of play around the man. Yeah. And it's a different type of play. But when you've got someone like Harry Kane who's going to drop deep, and it's going to leave all this space in behind. Sometimes the centre backs are going to come up. One's going to push off or whatever. You've got two players you can invert there and get in behind and break the lines. I think that's so important to us. So Marcus Rashford, I thought was really good. I yeah, think him I and Jude Bellingham on that left hand side would be. It, it's a really, yeah, really. I like that. And I think when Luke Shaw comes back in as well, I think he'll be England's starting left back. Yeah. And you've got like a really strong left side there. I think. And yeah. that's that's dynamic. Luke Shaw can get up the pitch. He can support Marcus Rashford, plays like that for his club. You've got that club link there, which is really important. And yeah, I think Marcus Rashford was excellent. Yeah, I um, agree. I thought Calvin Phillips, when he first 10 minutes, I thought he looked well off it. Yeah, and he I grew he into the game a bit. Well, he, kept, he got into the game, but I always worry about him. He, yeah. He, I, I find him, I see him just I saw him in out of position all the time. I saw him also play about four or five hospital passes to Carl Walker yeah. and then Carl Walker lost his head and was like, can you fucking stop passing but the ball? Like, is that match fitness? Height? Because I think I think Cam Phillips is a good player. Yeah. I, I think he's a good player and I think he offers something that Declan Rice and Drew Bellingham don't. Mm. But, and this may be a bit he- big, uh, bit big headed to say, but we are England. 90% of the games we're going to play we should be dominating the football. Yeah, we have some of the best possession-based teams in our in our domestic league, and some of the key players play for those teams. You've got Carl Walker, you've got uh, Aaron Ramsdale, you've got John Stones, you've got uh, Lewis Dunk, Declan Rice, Declan Rice, Jude Bellingham, the like their main man for Real Madrid. Um, who else we got? Like, and going forward, you've got like Grealish, Foden, Foden yeah. whatever. We should not be having to play with two DMs. I know you want to allow Bellingham to go forward, but why can't we have it where Declan Rice, right, take away that forward play from him? Because I don't, at Arsenal, he can do it. Mm. And I think it's off something different, but we don't need that with England. Yeah. We've got such a stat midfield. Like, you play Rice as the six, right? And you say, look, I want you to sit, like, basically no farther than, like, 15 yards past the halfway line. And you're just going to screen that defense. You're going to allow us to drop into a back three when our wingbacks push up and then just uh, like just allow and facilitate Jude Bellingham and whoever plays alongside him in my opinion it should be 
Foden, Madison, or Eze yeah. in that in that role, and then you could have them switching left and right, sort of like eight role, and you just we're gonna have so much pressure on that defensive team that it's gonna be yeah. you, you can't deal with it. And what we saw in the Scotland game was attack and fluidity. We saw where players were taking on uh, taking on the defenders. There was movement which we didn't see against Ukraine. We were just looking for that final killer pass every time and they mm. were sitting so deep you were never going to find it. The only thing that worries me is that when I was watching that game against Scotland, I didn't see any sort of consistent passages to play. It was always relying on someone to make a really good pass. It was relying on technical brilliance and, and brilliant football as opposed to well-drilled routines. Mm. And I, that's we where said I that think... a lot about Southgate in his tenure, though, that we haven't really seen any kind of like consistent style of play or passages of play. No, it's I... always just been he's been getting by on how good these group of players are. Yeah, and I, I and that is where I'm now leaning to the, the fact, like, right, it's it's too late to get him out for the Euros. Yeah, it's too late. We don't have enough time to implement a new manager. But what should this question have been asked after the World Cup? Because I think at that point, if we'd gone out, we could have had Graham Potter uh, with England working with the squad for you know over yeah. a year and a half, and then you're pretty much halfway there. I don't see the tactical shootness from him, which leads me to believe that we will win anything under him. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he's a killer tactically and um, at international level to win the. The trophies you need to be astute tactically. I just don't think he's at that level. But let's talk about Jude Bellingham because he's one player that I do want to talk about. Um, so wow. Gareth Southgate in the Scotland game played him as kind of like the ten and had Foden on one wing, Marcus Rashford on the other, and that's why Calvin Phillips keeps getting into this team is so that because I don't know if he doesn't believe in Declan Rice being able to play the lone six by himself or if Gareth Southgate is not brave enough to play with 1-6. It's either, it's either he doesn't believe in Declan Rice to do that by himself, or he's too scared to commit to only having His 1-6. His lineups are never brave. Yeah, so it's probably the latter that he just doesn't believe that Declan Rice can do like a Rodri for Man City and just be like a sitting six, which would allow you to have two eights and then Foden could play centrally, which I think is where everybody thinks Foden should be playing, apart from Southgate. So he played Jude Bellingham in the number 10, and I think... Pre this game, I'd always been very much that Jude Bellingham should be like in a double pivot with Declan Rice and that <coughs> Foden should be the kind of the, the, out, the, and out, 10. Yeah, the out and out 10. But what I saw De- uh, Bellingham do in this game was take the game by the scruff of the neck more than any player on the pitch. He was picking up the ball. He has the best link up play with of, uh, on any player. His pitch. link up play was crazy. His tenacity, his ability to like face a man, beat him and beat a couple of others and then not even like lose the ball, make a killer pass or get a shot off. He's brave. He's, He's brave. matured so much in like a year. And I, d- I saw um, like a article that came out of Real Madrid that apparently when he first arrived at Real Madrid training, all like the kind of older cavalry at Real Madrid, like Luka Modric, Carvajal, were all like, this guy is crap. This guy's insane. And the way he conducts himself as well. I think to get really... like five time Champions League winners to like be gassing you immediately. Luka Modric, one of the best midfielders of all time to be singing your praises. So you know Jubelin's already cracked. And I think being in that Real Madrid, what is it, six goals in six games, I think he's on. Something crazy, yeah. He's on fire. Mate, and... he's just standing there at the new Santiago Bernabeu and Which just looks mad. breathing it in, man. Yeah, so just he like... is, I think he's the guy. And I think he is what I think everybody feels like Foden should be doing. Foden should be taking the games by the scruff of the neck. Foden is technically probably better than Jude Bellingham. Yes, few players. I mean, did you see the finish? It was to adjust your body that quickly. Yeah. It was outrageous. And that's what everybody's been clamouring for Foden to do for Man City and England for a couple of years now. He's been on the scene, Foden, for about four or five years now as this kind of the next gather. But he hasn't really... Obviously, he's won fucking everything there is to win with Man City, but he's never really been the main guy. And for England, he's centrally never been given the opportunity. And then on the wing, he can't compete with Saka or Sterling to get like a wing space down. So he's never really been that guy. Whereas Jude Bellingham, the first opportunity he had to play that number 10 role, absolutely smashed it. And I think... How, and I will go on to this when we talk about how we want to line up for the Euros. 
But for me, I'm playing Judas at 10. I don't know if Foden gets into my starting lineup. So I completely agree with you with your first point. I think I what also saw I forgot that. <laughs> about him playing as a six. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for Dortmund, that's where he played predominantly. Yeah. He played a lot deeper. And I think his shirt number was like 24 or something at some point. Because mm. they're like, or his original, and they were like, because he's like a 10, yeah. an 8, and a 6 all in one ah, or something. Cool. Um, But yeah, he was, and I think we all thought of him as a 6. And previously, thinking he was played in that double pivot with, yeah. um, it was like him and Rice or Rice and Phillips. Yeah. And I completely agree. And going back to my point, we I feel now just we don't need the double pivot. Yeah. We don't we don't utilize a double pivot in the way we play. Mm. So why are we having two defensive midfielders on the pitch? Let Declan Rice do it all by himself. And I think we play with deck. sort of like a semi progressive eight. Yeah, so like eights. you play with someone like James Will Prowse. Even uh, James Madison can do that role. I think he can play that he can play that slightly deeper yeah. eight where he's not traversing to always arrive on the edge of the box or whatever. Mm. And then allowed Bellingham to play a really progressive eight or like almost like a floating drifting 10, ten yeah. and like link up with uh, various areas of the pitch. And I think he's outrageous. He is so good technically. His IQ is off the charts. And he's also just massive. He's so strong on the ball. Yeah, he's built. Like, he's so strong. Yeah. He never gets muscled off the ball. If he loses the ball, he instantly is yeah. ch- chasing. Like, you got that man chasing after you. He's fast. He, he's, yeah. He's, he's got that like youthful vigor about him where he just he's got the grit. He's, he's just determined. he wants it. He reminds he, me. I, I tweeted this when someone was like, um, "Oh, he's got his head screwed on, which Gaza didn't have, and he's got um, oh something else that Rooney didn't have." But he reminds me of a young Rooney in the fact that like. Like you said, every time he loses the ball, we just like chase you down and like clamp you. But like, and he's fast, and he his timing is one of his key strengths. He, he is mm. always arriving in the right areas at the right time. He can hit it. He can tap it in. Like, what can't this man yeah. do? He is a Rolls Royce of a football player, and he's unbelievable to watch. Real Madrid's main man. That's like at what, like twenty something, which is crazy. Age. And like, like, I think. A lot of it has come from the Real Madrid move, and I'll give him like massive plaudits for making that move. That's a, it's big, a, that's a risk. It's a brave move, and I, what I like about it is because Real Madrid they've got like their next gen midfield with Schuermeni, Camavinga. They're gonna always be the deeper two, and he must have seen that, and that must have appealed to him that going to Real Madrid, well, he? he gets the opportunity to play further forward. Whereas like maybe if he moved to Man City or if he moved to Liverpool, they'd expect him to play the deeper role. Whereas Going to Real Madrid, he must have seen that he can grow into the team with Schuermeni and Camavinga playing behind him and be like, fuck me, this is... This is for me. We're going to have like a next-gen midfield for 10 years. It's but yeah, crazy. he is absolutely outrageous. And I think he's going. he's got to be the one we sort of play around. He is, yeah. He's that guy. He's what I think Foden should be. But yeah. Foden's not that guy. The thing is, though, Foden for me is someone who will always drift in and out of games. He doesn't, he's not, he doesn't have the physical stature... <laughs> to bully players the yeah. way that Bellingham can. But Phil Foden technically is on another level to almost everyone in that England team. Yeah, 100%. And we saw that, and I, I was happy that Gareth Southgate included them in the starting lineup because there was a lot of questions being asked. I, I don't know about the right wing. I, I don't... I he, disagree. He should be nowhere near the right he's, wing. He, if anything, he's better on the left. Yeah, definitely. But I don't think he... But he shouldn't in, get there either. He doesn't yeah. get in anywhere ahead of... Um, Grealish or Rashford. Grealish or Rashford, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think, like, why can't we just be brave? Yeah. Well, I'm well going that's what Graham Souness was going saying. Back to this um, point. We sounding like Graham Souness because like, in the pre-game the only- stuff, he was saying, "I always feel like England." This is my Scottish accent is so bad, but I always feel like England. That no, that was <laughs> playing I with a hand- like England. A playing with a handbrake on. Yeah, I agree. And that going back to the main point all stems back to the manager he is not brave enough he's not he is not a risk taker he's not he will get us through one nils and two if we go back through the history of gareth southgate every game he's played for england yeah and we look at like results that have actually amazed us i'm struggling i'm i could probably pick three i'm looking looking at germany Germany one the denmark one which was was that straight after the germany and maybe sweden yeah, but Sweden just got battered like five 0 by Austria. Yeah, they are they're they're not good. 
<laughs> they're Germany, you've fallen off a cliff. Yeah. So even when we beat Germany, that was probably like the end they, of like. You're right. There hasn't been many. That like, was that was like hype. that was big in our heads because it was the old rivals. Yeah. Like, the Germany one was the best one. That was outrageous. That was crack. And we were we were let off a little bit by Muller missing like a one on one. Yeah. Um, but for me, and Germany stink as well. They yeah, just Germany sat, stink. They just like sat their manager. Denmark were meant to be like the dark horses at the last. And they're, they're shit at they, all. Yeah, they yeah. were rubbish. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, so like, I, have we beaten France, who were pretty much the only good team? No, no. And we lost to Italy on penalties because of poor. Game and management. Italy is shit and all. And we 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 went into that game. We went one 0 up within like four minutes or something. Luke Shaw, and then shut the. Bench. And then we decided right. Let's sit back. Instead, instead of taking the game to them yeah. and saying, right, we're going to put two or three past you and having a positive mentality, we're like, well, if we can keep it 1 0, we've done all right. <laughs> well, yeah, like, yeah, of course you're going to, yeah, but like, why would you play that risk? A one yeah. goal cushion is never good, good enough, especially yeah. when you've got Harry Maggs at centre back. Do be like that. So for me, he is not brave enough. And I would love to see, like, hopefully going into this Euros, yeah. This will be like, oh, he's like, I'm going out in a blaze his of glory. His last hurrah. And he's yeah, playing like 20 attacking players. Come on, three at the back, a nice little box midfield, four well, attackers. I swear to God, yeah, we're going to move on to this in a second. But if we line up in the first game of the Euros, I'm and I'm seeing hell. Kieran Trippier at left back, Harry Maguire at centre back, and Calvin Phillips in that team, or Jordan Henderson, oh, mate, I will like lose hen- my shit. Hendo, Rice, and um, Calvin Phillips. But... Anyway. Should we move on to talking about how we would line up for the Euros? For the first game. We haven't even qualified yet. No. Have we not? No, nah, I think we need one. We can only qualify in October now. Ah. Because we drew against Ukraine. Fuck it. Who cares? So I think like We're a, going to the Euros. Like a point against Malta will do it. Nice. Or something like that. But yeah. Um, the Euros. Wow. Gareth Southgate's probably last tournament. Um, do you want to kick us off? Who would you... I think we're both really good for a four-three-three, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I would, I would go a little bit crazy and play three at that, but we're not going to do that. Are we'll you not going to do that? No. Nah, we'll why just... do you? Why, is that? If that's what you want. Go for it. No, nah, it's not going to happen, and I don't want to say something that's not going to happen. Right. Four-three-three. Yeah. Standard. Bog standard. Goalkeeper. You've got a decent selection of. Uh, I think we saw in that Scotland game what um, Ramsdale brings to the table. Some of the kind of playing out from the back. He did like the most disgusting. Um, who fucked the pitch and went to Rashford, put him in one on one. I think Ramsdale, if he doesn't lose his starting Arsenal spot by the Euros, which there is a potential he might, but if he doesn't and he's still Arsenal's number one and Arsenal competing near the top end of the table, he's in good form. For me, he should be England's number one in comparison to relegation fighting Everton and Jordan Pickford. Ramsdale should be number one all, all day. Yeah, for me, it's. 50-50 between Ramsdale and Pickford. I, I'm with. I like Pickford. Get off the fence. Pick, you Pickford pussy. has made outrageous saves for England. Yeah, he's kept us. Well, Ramsdale games. hasn't had the opportunity. And, to I, make and a, I know, I know, I know. Saves. So that's why I'm hesitant to drop Pickford. But I'm talking about being brave. Ramsdale starts with me. Come on. And like, I just want to preface this as well. That you can pick any player, any England, any player that can qualify for English okay. nationality. We can go crazy. So like Evan Ferguson, yeah. Oh, come no, on. No, I'm just kidding. But like, obviously. Yeah. One player that you might want to talk about is Ben White. Yes. Should we talk about Ben White? Because I don't know what he's done to Gareth Southgate. Something happened during the World Cup because he was there. He got called up to the squad and everyone was like, oh my God, he's actually been called up. Which is hard to ignore because Arsenal at that point were top of the league. He was flying. And so Southgate couldn't ignore him. But then he got sent home. And then there was like, oh, is it personal? Nothing personal happened. So it was definitely like a beef with Gareth Southgate. Just come out and say what's happened or that he's not going to be in the squad anymore because people are going to clamour for him because he is currently, I'd say, the most consistent right back England have. He's not, he's not better than Carl Walker. Carl Walker doesn't always play. He's in and out of that City squad and he plays in like a back three now, Carl Walker. I'd ha- I'd probably have Carl Walker at right centre back at this point. But Ben White is playing consistently at right back. To be fair, he is playing centre back at the moment, so maybe my point is mute. But Ben White has been playing consistently; hasn't been injured, so that, that takes Reese James out of it because that guy's made of fucking. He he might not be a footballer, but mate, he's he? made of like Rivita. Um, so he's not in it. Who else is there? Trent. Trent is a possibility if Liverpool keep flying. Trent's a weird one, actually. Uh, let's talk about Ben White. Ben White's not going to get into squad, but I'd have Ben White as my right back. So you, you're saying for your England starting eleven against. Whoever on the first game of the Euros, Bob you're gonna Reeves. have you're gonna have Ramsdale 
<laughs> and Ben White. You see a theme here. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about Trent um, before you say you're right back. I like Trent a lot. Trent is like a problem child, isn't he? he where does he play? Defensively, I've given up trying to defend him a long time ago. He is terrible defensively. Also, if you're trying to do that kind of... Invert. Nah. Uh, oh, no, sorry. The, um, just single, the single pivot, pivot, yeah. You need defensively astute players, and he is definitely not that. Yeah. Um, he, ben White is that. Yeah. So that helps Ben White's case as He well. is a fantastic player, Trent, but mm. I, I don't think this England team's made for him. No. I, I, I Unless he can somehow prove over the next season that defensively he's improved his game I, I it's too much of a risk I like I, I don't understand why you would have him over even Kieran Trippier you can't couple that risk of playing a not defensively sound Trent with the risk of playing a single pivot no I 100% That's agree like double what jeopardy 100% agree um moving on from Trent my right back would be Carl Walker mm. I think he he is good he is outrageous. He's and the best right back ever. He, he, in the, well, in the Prem. I think ever, maybe. Ever. Oh, ever. I, I think, actually, Danny Alves Danny was Danny Alves is good. What, like Philip Lahm? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's the best ever English right back. Emmanuel Abue. He's not English. Um, but yeah, I would have Carl Walker still. I think he... Neither is Philip Lahm. Huh? Neither is Philip Lahm. No, I was just taking the oh. <laughs> Um, But yeah, Carl Walker is outrageous. Yeah. He, he's, there's a reason... He was he was probably the best player of the last over the two games for me. Yeah, he's good. Um, and yeah, I think over the last year he's getting better at playing up further up the pitch, mm. which is weird for a player who's thirty three years old. Yeah, but I'm seeing I'm seeing more oomph out of him and more sort of push to go up the pitch, which I like a lot. We well, see apparently he was like planning on retiring from England, and Gareth Southgate yeah. like, pulled him back from the brink, which is nuts because that would leave us a bit high and dry. Mm. But yeah, for me, yeah, Ramsdale, Walker. Carl Walker. Yeah. Centre back pairing. Do your double. Do my double. So I think I'd go. Johnny if, Stones in there. Yeah, Johnny Stones. So if Ben White <laughs> doesn't get in the right back slot, I'd play him at centre back alongside John Stones. You're going to have Johnson. a holding in here, aren't you? Yeah, maybe. No, nah, I'd go because I think Ben White is just not getting called up at all. I don't think. I think something's happened there, so I'm just going to ignore him. Well, I'm going to go. Where's your right back? Yeah, but... I'm this is your England team. That you're, you're in charge. Okay. You're in charge. So if Ben White's my right back, I'm going John Stones and Levi Colwell. But that was close. I almost said Lewis Dunk. Yeah, that's actually the exact same as what I would go for. Okay. I'm going Lewis Dunk. Uh, sorry, I'm going John ben Stones, White. Levi Colwell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just think like you've got two players there that are excellent on the ball. You've got John Stones, who's been one of the best centre-backs in the world. He's the, the best last season the and yeah. bit. Don't get it twisted. Levi Cole, who I think is an outrageous centre back. Yeah, I think give him time at Chelsea. He'll yeah, be... that's the only issue, isn't it? That Chelsea team needs to get into form pre Euros, and he needs to get into form in that Chelsea team. Yeah, or he might not get. I think I think eventually it will form. click with under Pochettino. Yeah, but it, it's going to take time. Mm. But I think Levi Cole has shown more than enough last season for me to pick him. Yeah, if not, maybe Tomori, but I don't think as good on the ball no and I don't I'd almost I'm really liking Lewis Dunk at the moment I'd probably yeah, have I'd have, Lewis Dunk I'd have ahead Lewis of Tomori, Dunk Tomori. Yeah. but yeah and then uh, so left we both back. saying Gay not really feeling it I'm I'm 50-50 on Gay I, for me I see a player who's really I, he's really solid he's really good for Crystal Palace I don't think he'll ever be a top 6 defender and we're both writing off Harry Mags he's just I don't uh, he wouldn't even be in my team wouldn't he be on the squad, squad. Well, I. But um, maybe, maybe if we're like one nil down with like ten minutes to go, I'm gonna whack him, him on top, and get him yeah, on the pitch. Yeah. But um, for me, yeah, back four, Left rounded back. out by Luke Shaw. Yeah, Luke Shaw, I agree. Same. But yeah, so you got I've got Ramsdale, Walker, Stones, Colwell, and Shaw, and you've got Ben White in that right back. Mm-hmm. Right, both going for the single pivot in Rice. Yes, and I think that plays very nicely into me having um, Ben White at right back because that's the Arsenal link. But I mean, you're going for like the FIFA chemistry, aren't you? And Ben White is used to kind of at right back tucking into the central role. That allows Luke Shaw to push up further because that free can kind of shift across. I like that a lot. And I think, the, yeah, the Declan Rice-Ben White link is good. So I would go Declan Rice as the deepest of the, the boy dem. And then what I'd do is I'd have Jude as the left-sided eight and James Madison at the 10. 
Yeah, I. Well, that's basically, I think, the midfield that I'd go for as well. I would go for obviously Rice. I'm telling him you're not going pot, like you're staying on the halfway 15 line. Fifteen yards past maybe, the halfway maybe 10, line. Maybe ten, fifteen yeah. yards. But like, I want you to sit there. I want you to sweep up the balls that come bouncing out the box. I want you to just and uh, distribute, hmm. distribute sensibly to allow the players to have a sense of security behind them. They don't have to worry about. Oh, am I too far forward? Yeah. Left side of centre, uh, centre mid, Jude Bellingham. Yep. He's going to play for me in the direct line with whoever I have on the right. And I'm stuck here because I love Eberechi Eze. Yeah, I was going to say but, Eze, but he's just not. But I think James Madison's better as a tempo man, which I think is what we're going to need a little bit in that midfield. James Madison, especially if we're not getting James Ward Prowse in, James Madison is a set piece specialist. Yeah. He is a bit of a like goal assist. Um, He's an output magnet, machine. yeah, yeah. output magnet, crazy compared to Eze, who does get a lot of goals and assists, but not on the same level as Madison, and Foden, who does as well, but not on the same level as Madison. Madison every game I'm seeing well, him goals. I'm, so for me, out of Eze and Foden, Madison, Madison's the one who I can see. He's, I think he's got the most sort of like game intelligence. Like he, he, he probably mm. has the best idea of how to control the game. He'll yeah. know when to slow it down when we need it. And I think he can play on that right-hand side better than Eze or Foden. I think they both like to come in from the left-hand yeah. side onto the right. Agreed. So, and yeah. he is currently the main man at a team that is flying. Yeah. So that can't be um, sniffed at. So yeah, 100% agree. But I'd have them I'd have them play in a line. Yeah, I'd have Jude Bellingham quite high. And then we'd have to, like, depend on where the ball is. They're going to have to use their brains a bit. But then you've got, on Bless the edge them. of the box, arriving at the right times, you could have Ma- Madison and Bellingham. Yeah, it's, it's outrageous. Nice. Right. Juicy time. Front three, baby. Who are you going for? Left wing? Yeah, left wing. I'm going Marcus Rashford. Yeah, I think it's out of him and Grealish. I think Grealish is a nice option to have to bring on. Yeah, I agree. But um, yeah, for me, Marcus Rashford. And then I think that's the one position where I th- there's not a lot in it. I'd happily play Grealish there. I think I'd go on form out of those two. Yeah, I think it depends on what they get. Like, if, if it's a game where we're going to have more of the ball, maybe I'll go for Grealish. Grealish, yeah, yeah. Because Grealish is better at getting us up the pitch he's good at carrying yeah. the ball Marcus Rashford is more and I think Marcus Rashford probably be better off the bench than Grealish he's, he's much more dynamic yeah. and he's got much more output than Grealish but um, for me I think if we're playing how I want to play obviously we're going to have Harry Kane at the striker role I think that's a given right mm. but for me if Harry's going to be dropping deep maybe I want Rashford actually no I'm going to go Grealish because in my team Harry's not dropping deep I'm not letting him he's yeah. not allowed to, he's Tell not getting within 15 yards of the <laughs> yeah, 15 line. yards Declan Rice and him aren't allowed to touch yeah each I don't want to speak to yeah. each other again <laughs> so uh, but yeah maybe I'll go for Grealish actually I think yeah I think that's in. the only position where I genuinely it's 50-50 yeah. right uh, wing is my first name on the team sheet the best England asset it's Bukayo Saka he's not better than Bellingham he's better than every single person in this country it's my boy Bukayo Saka he He's competing with no one for that right wing spot. Anyone that I think he should be competing with, he's clear of them by a long distance. Foden, he's clear at right wing Shouldn't by be. a long distance. Sterling is probably the only one that he's competing with. Sterling doesn't even get in the squad at the moment. If Bowen has another good season, Just he, not do- he, he doesn't get close. No. So there's no one really that Saka's competing with for that position. Saka is the best right winger England have by a country mile. Yeah, I think that rounds out our uh, front three. Bukayo Ash. Saka is in there. And, uh, and I, I think it, and he, he offers a lot defensively. He does, well. yeah. He's a hard worker. Um, yeah, I think it's really good balance. So, run us through your English start lineup, if you can remember it. Yeah, I can. Uh, I've got Ramsdale in goal. That's the first Arsenal player. Ben White at right back. And then I've got a centre-back pairing of Johnny Stones and Levi Colwell. Luke Shaw at left back. Declan Rice as a nice, deep, holding six. And then... My, like, advanced 8 and 10 are Bellingham and Madison. Left wing, Rashford. Right wing, Saka. And up top, Harry Kane. So that is Ramsdale. Oh, four Arsenal players in that team. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I've gone four. I'm very flicky on them, but Ramsdale in goal. I've got Kyle Walker at right back. Uh, Centre back pairing of Stones and Levi Colwell with Luke Shaw round down at the back four. Got Rice sitting as a single pivot with Madison and Bellingham in the middle, and then a front three joining Ros of uh, actually no, nah, Grealish. Grealish, Kane, and baby boy Bukayo Saka. Gosh. 
I'll, uh, I'll see if Ros wants to whack up a nice little graphic. Yeah, I'll those. get those out on and Twitter we'll, and you can, uh, you can vote. Vote, or we can do like a, anyone that we think we've missed out on that should get in the squad or all that jazz. Let us know who you'd have in your 11. But yeah, no, it's 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 an interesting time wrapping this all up. It's an interesting time going into this Euros because I think there's a lot less, there's a lot of expectation, but it's a different kind of expectation. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, it's now very or much never. last hurrah. Yeah, and yeah. we may we don't want to regret at the end of this journey that we didn't win anything. Yeah. Because Gareth has given us so many fantastic memories. And it's it, like, growing up, I never thought I'd even see England get near to a semi-final or a final. We were yeah. always terrible international football. Yeah. And he's made he's made a, the whole country interesting in watching every single weather game, whether it be a friendly or a uh, international qualifier, uh, sorry, a Euro qualifier, a World Cup qualifier, whatever. Everyone's watching it because they yeah. want to see how it goes. And I hope it doesn't come back to bite us. And I want us to do well. But I need to see some bravery. And I need to see some sort of tactical ability from him. Yeah. Quickly, before we end, Gareth Southgate, win or lose the Euro, who's replacing him? You get one name. Oh, that's, that's good. I don't even like the idea of Potter anymore. I'm thinking, give it Roy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm joking. Um, or I don't know. It's because one name that's Graham been thrown Potter? around, and I think is ridiculous. Pep Guardiola, Guardiola. Yeah, fuck that. He's, he's no the most anyway. like he's the most intense manager yeah. in the world. You think he's gonna like be happy with only being able to see his players yeah. like once every two months or something? Yeah, no, nah, it would never be. No Pep. chance. Who who do you think? I think if depending on how Newcastle season goes, I think Eddie, Eddie Howe yeah. could be. It. I think Newcastle. If Eddie's season sort of implodes a little bit, he could be out of a job very quickly, and I think he'd be the one. But or do you give it to one of those stinkers like if Steven Gerrard gets sacked, no chance, or Frank Lampard no gets chance. sanked, no or... chance, no. The only one out of them I'd give it to is Rooney. Rooney, I was about to say Rooney. But for me, it's got to be probably Eddie Howe. I don't mind Potter. Yeah, I think it. I think they can't get. It's got to be better than Southgate. Yeah, it's got to be. Upwards. And he's a good man manager as well. Um. Or we go brave. Mourinho. Yeah, I fucking I'd I'd love, love that. it. Yeah. I was thinking about Antonio Conte, but yeah, Mourinho's like that kind of vibe, isn't he? Yeah, yeah I'm going that's my pick. Jose Mourinho for England, Come baby. On. Come on, baby. Let's go. All right. Thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We are loving all the new subscribers. Big shout out to everyone that's subscribed recently. Got some good content coming next week and for the rest of the season come on if you're not already involved get involved in the martinelli shirt giveaway it's a signed martinelli shirt why aren't you already getting involved it's so easy all you got to do is follow us and AFTV on x formerly known as twitter subscribe to our youtube channel and you're in and you're in mate you're in with a chance you could be next week holding that signed shirt if gabriel martinelli scores against lowly Everton so yeah you'd be silly not to get involved get all your mates involved as well it literally takes all of two minutes to get involved and one of you can win it That's and then sick. you get to listen to all this great footballing content so yeah get involved um, but yeah we do really appreciate all the support everyone's shown 500 subscribers is a big number for us might not seem a lot to a lot of people but we're us, getting there we're getting there we're baby. doing it we're doing it baby and we're gonna hopefully uh, continue to do this for a long time whatever your favourite football podcast is comment it down below because we're gonna clean them out mate. but yeah Thank you guys for watching. It's been Board Draw episode number 61. You come on, you England. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.